What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today's video was originally just meant to be a quick comparison of the changes that have come to Rainbow Six Siege with patch 2.0 for Operation Grim Sky. But as you will have seen from the title and thumbnail, I believe there has also been an unannounced buff for the Bearing 9. So not only will I be demonstrating all of the changes from the patch notes for the SAS's SMG-11, Mira's Vector, Maestro's Alder 556 and of course Clash, but we'll also be examining the Bearing 9 and all of the other machine pistols too. How good or bad are all of these guns now? Let's go and take a look. First let us examine the impact of the changes that were announced in the patch notes. The change to Maestro's Alder is probably the least impactful for most players because it only affects the hipfire bloom but you definitely need to be aware of it. Maestro was introduced into the game with the unique feature of having a gun that has a pretty good hipfire spread to begin with and when you start firing that bullet spread used to tighten up throughout the burst. This was an interesting feature to have, but in a game where hip firing is usually a really bad idea, I don't think many players really ever made full use of Maestro's capability, and so this feature has now been removed and we now get the normal hip fire that opens up significantly throughout a burst. It's no big deal really, but if you did get used to using Maestro's hip fire, you need to shake that habit pretty quickly, or you will definitely be losing many gunfights in the near future. Clash has been nerfed in terms of her gadget capabilities, but here is something interesting. I recorded footage just before patch 2.0 dropped with the intention of showing off the differences of old and new Clash side by side. But as you can see here, there is no difference in terms of the switching time or recharge time. When Clash received some bug fixes back in patch 1.1 of this season, her gun switching time was made more consistent at 2 seconds from gun to shield and 1 second from shield to gun, and her recharge started after 1 second. But it seems as if some changes must have slipped into the game with patch 1.2, because in both of my 1.2 and 2.0 patch recordings, the switching time from shield to gun has now been upped to 1.25 seconds instead of 1 second and the recharge time starts after 2 seconds instead of 1. So yes, the switching and recharge times have changed, but if you were playing Clash before the latest patch drop, you won't actually notice the difference because the change had already been applied early. I went ahead and confirmed the nerf on the slowing effect on enemies and it is now half a second as advertised. Long story short, yes Clash has been nerfed, but if you've been happily playing her before the latest patch, you can continue to do so because the changes were apparently applied a little early. And now let's take a closer look at probably the most interesting topic of the video, comparing the before and after performance of the SMGs that were buffed. The fundamental change to all of the guns that received a buff is that the horizontal element of the recoil diamond of each gun, that is the amount of random recoil deviation per shot, has been reduced quite a lot, while the vertical climb for each shot as well as the vertical element of the recoil diamond have been kept the same. We can see this in the recoil patterns. Each shot group climbs by the exact amount as it did before, but you can see that the patterns are now much narrower, especially for the 4th and 5th shots in each burst. Since I was anticipating the change for the Vector and SMG-11, I recorded some before and after footage. You can definitely see that the random chance of branching out to the left or right is significantly lower with these guns now and that means that longer bursts become much more viable. And when it comes to controlling the recoil, definitely on PC and partially also on console, the vertical muzzle climb from shot to shot is not really a problem until it becomes extreme. The difficulty in controlling guns comes from the random horizontal recoil that affects your shots in addition to the climb. So having this specific element of the recoil reduced means that it will now be much easier to keep your gun on target while spraying. Now of course, the change for the bearing was not announced and so I never thought to record a before video for the recoil, but I do believe that there has been a change. We can see in the in-game recoil chart comparison that the bearing has basically had exactly the same style of buff as the other two guns, with randomized recoil spread being reduced, resulting in a much narrower spread pattern. But the recoil for the bearing according to these patterns is still pretty extreme. The third shot could already go straight over the head of the target silhouette in the chart and the fourth shot is barely visible. 
We can use the same test to double check the other full auto machine pistols, namely the C75 and the SMG12, and for both of these guns, the patterns remain exactly the same pre and post patch. Could it be that there is just a glitch in the bearings chart? Maybe, so I tried to confirm the supposed new recoil with an in-game test, and if we do a comparison between the three post-patch recoil tests I did, I would say that the behavior of the bearing is pretty much as I would have expected it from the new pattern. The maximum horizontal deviation for the bearing is comparable with that of the vector, but you can see that the vertical distance between the first few shots is much greater and the horizontal spread kicks in somewhat earlier than for the other two guns. So time to conclude and answer the all important question, are these guns good now and should you start using them more again? Although in all fairness, this question doesn't really apply to the vector. Yeah, its recoil has been a bit more random since the beginning of Grim Sky, making long range fights a bit dicey, but the vector still remained 83.4% more viable than the godforsaken Geo shotgun, so almost everyone would still have been using it. Nevertheless, I still think that is great news that the vector is becoming more manageable again. The Vector, and also the SMG-11 for that matter, will still be harder to control than almost all other guns in the game, but at least now with some practice and as long as you're ready to compensate for the above average recoil, you can use them with a little more confidence, especially during longer bursts where the difference becomes most noticeable. The Bearing 9 might have had an apparent mini buff, but I don't think it matches that of the other two guns at all. The bearing has been absolutely horrible since the launch of Grim Sky, and even after this improvement it remains an extremely challenging gun to use as soon as you get beyond a few meters range. Maybe give it a go and see what it feels like to you now, but I personally may actually be sticking to the P229. I haven't quite decided yet. And that's it for today. Have you gone back to any of these guns and do you think they are more viable now? And what about any other hidden changes? Do any of the other guns feel better or worse after the latest patch? Let me know in the comments section below. As always guys, feel free to leave a like or dislike to show me what you thought of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next episode.